Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a great day and that you are all doing well to start things off. As anyone with altcoins in their portfolio knows, when the price of Bitcoin takes a hit, the rest of the cryptocurrency market gets hit harder. Likewise, when Bitcoin bounces, altcoins tend to outperform. The correlation between the market leader and its supplicants goes both ways. But Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse thinks that's about to change. As the cryptocurrency market's first and foremost cryptocurrency, Bitcoin determines price action for the wider altcoin market, as we have seen time and time again. Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse, however, sees a separation in the future. The San Francisco-based company's CEO told CNBC's Power Lunch yesterday. He said... There's a very high correlation between the price of XRP and the price of Bitcoin, but ultimately, these are independent open source technologies. It's early. Over time, you'll see a more rational market and behaviors that reflect that. The company's first quarter has uh, been positively brimming with partnerships and announcements. Garlinghouse noted that Ripple has penned 20 production contracts with new firms. While MoneyGram and others are currently testing cross-border payments with XRP. Most recently, Currencies Direct Limited, a UK-based firm, exchange broker, and international payment provider, announced the successful completion of an international payment over Ripple's X Rapid platform. The transaction also used Ripple's scalable digital asset XRP and represents one of the first successful trials of a cryptocurrency by a mainstream financial services organization. However, Ripple's success in the market has arguably not correlated to its advantages behind the market scene, and most argue that this is due uh, in large part to Bitcoin's market dominance. I was reading something earlier. I think that um, just about all the altcoins, uh, obviously Bitcoin excluded, uh, dropped about like 70 to 80 percent while the market was going down, all because of Bitcoin's price movements. Um, like I said, I'm glad that there's a discussion going on about this. I'm glad that it's not just us talking about this anymore, talking about it in the comment section or people writing blogs about it. I'm glad that he went on TV and spoke about it. I, I got to see a tiny bit of of the discussion and it was pretty much this woman who didn't care for cryptocurrencies at all. It was actually kind of awkward. Um, and every single time she would ask a question, why we need crypto, he kind of, uh, Brad Garlinghouse kind of uh, shut her down. Um, in the most appropriate manner possible on television. Um, but it, like I said, it's nice to hear that this is all kind of going on, that people are finally talking about this. There are a number of exchanges that are supposed to be opening within June. Um, SBI, the NASDAQ bounced, uh, bounced based one, and I, if I'm not mistaken, two others. So I'm hoping these major names uh, allow us to get away from Bitcoin, at least a tiny bit for the time being. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one who's frustrated to see all these other projects going down. Because logically, after realistically, even just on Ripple's front, all the news that they've 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 had, the price should be a lot higher. The same with all the other coins. Think of all the partnerships that I've been announcing over the last couple of months. Um, I think in a in an ideal situation that just Bitcoin would go down, and all these other projects. I have a strong feeling we'd be double the prices of where we were in January had um, the entire thing with the futures market and uh, Bitcoin being sold off, uh, having some crazy effect on the market. So this is going to be like a bit of like a world travel video. There's a lot of news from different countries. A branch, the Dutch government has already released an economic report risk claiming cryptocurrencies present a low risk to financial stability in the country according to a report published on May 29th. The report was published, prepared and published by the CPB Netherlands Bureau for Economic Policy Anal Analysis, the CPB. The CPB states in the report that at the current time, cryptocurrencies pose a low risk to the financial system due to the low level of capitalization, as well as the limited involvement of traditional financial institutions and systems. The CPB separately noted the problems associated with crypto's use in crime financing, fraud, high crypto market volatility, and the energy consumption of crypto mining. 
The report predicts that crypto-related risks will increase with more interaction with government financial institutions. The agency also states that cryptocurrencies are not money substitutes, claiming that users generally prefer to hold their crypto instead of using it as an everyday payment method. The report stressed the need for balanced financial regulation. The CPB compared the risks of lack of financial regulation equally with strict regulations, claiming that overly harsh measures can increase the activity of shadow banks. Not exactly sure what a shadow bank is. I assume they mean uh, something on the dark web, but interesting way to phrase it. Um, there's going to be a lot of news like this over the next couple of weeks. Um at least from my assumption and having read around, you may have noticed two, three, four months ago, the news that we had from different countries was that crypto uh, posed a huge risk to financial stability. To this, it was not necessary. We didn't need it. Um, and now we're getting a lot of news reports. And I think these will only come further. I'm pretty sure all of this is coordinated in some sort of way when it comes to all these countries. Um, June is once again tomorrow. And it's also supposed to be the time that we receive some type of information about regulations within the U.S. Not holding my breath at all. And um, also supposed to be the time where the market picks back up. So I assume this is kind of a calming feature, if you will. I, I, I can't really put my finger on it, but there's a lot of news floating around like this from different countries talking about how crypto isn't as bad as previously expected. Tron is in the news today because of their mainnet launch. Tron, TRX, the 10th largest cryptocurrency, has begun the transition from the Ethereum network to its own public blockchain. The Tron mainnet, dubbed Odyssey 2.0, officially launched on May 31st at 12 a.m. UTC, initiating the first step in moving the $4 billion cryptocurrency to an independent network. The network will remain in beta for most of June, providing developers with the opportunity to configure their wallets and browsers before the network goes live. Token migration will occur from the uh, 21st of June to the 24th of June, when users must deposit their ERC-20 tokens at participating cryptocurrency exchanges to receive an equivalent number of TRX on the new blockchain. The transition will accumulate on June 25th, a date that developers have dubbed Independence Day. Okay. When Genesis Block will propagate across the network and investor predictions that Tron will be an Ethereum killer will finally be put to the test. I have never heard Tron referred to as an Ethereum killer. Uh, go ahead. Why not? Say what you want. The independence of our protocol is a crucial step in ushering in the next phase of the internet through democratization and decentralization, said Tron founder Justin Sun. He said, our team maintains a high standard of excellence and we head towards becoming a mainstream public blockchain. The move of the Tron protocol to the main net makes it easier for developers to break away from Ethereum and open opens up new doors towards better scaling, commercialization, and express lanes needed for global DAP development. Like I said, I have never heard Tron referred to as an Ethereum killer. This makes it like the fourth one this year, something like that. Uh, you have Tron, you have Cardano, you have EOS. Uh, I think Verge is also supposed to be an Ethereum killer. Uh, let's see exactly what ends up happening. There's a lot of promises that have been going on with all these cryptocurrencies. Uh, you know which ones I like. You know which ones I particularly don't care for. Uh, like, I'm... Whatever. I have, like, high hopes for that Ethereum will kind of, like, come out of the woodworks and go, Hey, up, uh, you know, we have our upgrades ready. I doubt that's going to happen. But with so much... Uh, what's it called? Uh... So many people on their backs trying to get into the number one spot. It's going to be interesting to see if any of them end up trying or end up passing Ethereum. There was an um, Omize Go um, AMA Ask Me Anything yesterday. You can actually find it on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. If you go to the top and type in Omize Go um, AMA and like do like the last 24-hour thing to search for the time, pretty sure you'll find it. Um, I have a very strong feeling that they're very close to Plasma, very close to Casper and Sharding as well. Because they all seemed rather giddy when they were talking about exactly what's going on. This was filmed yesterday as well. Uh, but, right, let's move on from this topic. Next up, we have yet another country. The Central Bank of Russia released a report on May 30th stating that crypto assets do not currently threaten global financial stability as the global volume of cryptocurrency transaction is very low. 
The research paper states that instead of the term cryptocurrency, the Financial Stability Board proposes to use the term crypto asset, which can be considered a financial asset based on the application of cryptography and distributed ledger technology. According to the report, crypto assets do not pose a risk to global financial stability because at present, the volume of crypto assets transactions is very low compared to the scale of global financial system. The relation of this segment to the financial system is insignificant according to the report. The paper states that crypto assets could contribute a risk to financial stability in the case of further market growth, large-scale involvement of retail and institutional investors, banks, and other market players. According to the central bank's report, the high price volatility of crypto assets prevents them from being a reliable standard of value, means of exchange, and store of value. Yet again, another country saying that cryptos do not pose a risk like I still firmly believe in my heart. This public sentiment will eventually change. At some point, I do think we will definitely be a threat. I think we're at the very beginning of it, and this I think they see it. And this is why uh, we had so much talk about banning and all this other stuff around January when we hit 800 billion, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the number. By the time we hit around five to ten trillion dollars um when there's going to be a lot of rumbling and i don't think we're going to like uh everything that's happening and i'm fairly certain as well once we hit around there's around seven stable coins that are going to be launched around june altogether there's also like a mcafee coin or something like that which i didn't really want to talk about some type of like what is it? He's launching his own fiat that's going to be backed by crypto. Um, he also says he wants it to be stable or whatever the case might be. Once we have about 15 to 20 different stable coins, because they're also going to start coming out a lot more and they start reaching multi $20 billion or more. I think this is when we're going to start seeing um, news about these countries uh, talking about banning and or stopping cryptocurrencies from being active in their countries. This is just kind of how I feel about it. But once you hit a trillion dollar market, you are then worth more than multiple countries around the world. So that is a big uh, deal. Next up, <laughs> Bitcoin's price is once again in the news. Like all digital assets, the Bitcoin price is notoriously volatile, but a surprising pattern has emerged from that volatility, which may have wider ramifications for the traditional finance markets as a whole. The CBOE Volatility Index, or VIX, is an established measure of volatility in the overall marketplace, long term, long used by traders to give them an impression of investor fears in the market. VIX analyst and president of Equity Armor Investments, Brian Stutland, better known as the fear merchant, okay, believes that the Bitcoin price is actually predicting the VIX one month in advance. Speaking with CNBC, he said, there is huge correlation right now between the VIX and Bitcoin 30 days ago. 30 trading days ago, that is uh, starting to measure out credit risk in the market. That's where cryptocurrency is becoming. It's becoming a way to sort of de-risk yourself from credit risk in the banking industry. Because cryptocurrencies are largely unregulated and allow invest investors to, make, to move their money, off the balance sheets of banks and decreased credit risk, Stuttland thinks that they may be using Bitcoin as a safe haven from the stock market despite the volatility of the former to avoid credit risk by putting their money in a uh, off-grid position. He said Bitcoin is a way for investors to basically move their money off the balance sheets of banks and into their own wallets, he added, essentially storing their money under their pillow in the form of virtual currency. I... I don't know. It's quite interesting. I don't think, I don't know. We, we get news that Bitcoin is uh, uh, correlated, that, you know, we, we're able to see this and we get a lot, a lot of news like the other countries saying that it has no effect on it at all. And I'm still fairly, uh, the, the uh, traditional stock market crash has been spoken about for literally since 2009 at this point. Apparently the stock market crash is overdue. I think this is the ultimate test of what cryptocurrencies can do or will be able to do because as long as I've been into crypto, the mindset has been that when the financial markets crash, crypto will explode because all the banks will simply move their money over into cryptocurrencies. And it does kind of make sense. Over the last couple of months, you have seen, just like I have seen, all the banks that are getting into cryptocurrencies that now love Bitcoin. Um, I don't know if they 
are looking at the books and they understand that something is going to happen because they've kind of propelled themselves forward in 2018 to be these like organizations and companies and banks that certainly now love crypto. They love, you know, the idea of it and what it can do. Uh, I just, <laughs> I don't want the stock market to crash. I almost said that. Um, I am interested to see what is going to happen when the stock market does crash. I'll, I'll just leave it as, uh, as that. <laughs> Next up, Zcash is in the news. The development team of the Zcash cryptocurrency has released new software that contains support elements of the network's planned Sapling upgrade set to take place later this year. Sapling isn't the first hard fork for Zcash on the horizon. That's Overwinter, which is slated for late June of this year. But the 1.1.1 update puts the initial consensus rule in place as prepares a sapling-based testnet according to release public notes on Wednesday. The Zcash team first revealed details about sapling back in February last year, which is aimed at speeding up transactions on the network. What's missing is an activation block height, essentially the exact transaction block at which point the sapling hard fork takes effect. And according to developers, this will be included in a future update. It's very, um, the only news that we seem to get from Zcash, Dash, and Monero are just about updates. Um, and they, they, their prices still hold very, very strong. I wonder exactly who's using them. Uh, because I don't hear a lot of news about them and I don't hear that a lot of people are holding these coins. When I hear about coins that people are holding, it's usually all the other altcoins. Um... Good to hear that they still have updates for things that are coming out, uh, but there's never any like actual um, integration news. But I, I guess their entire point is to not be integrated into the main system and to kind of, you know, remain underground with their uh, crypto doings. Next up, um, according to a published survey, over a third of high net worth individuals either plan to or already have invested in cryptocurrencies. The research was conducted by the DeVere Group, a global independent financial consultancy group. The poll surveyed over 600 of the group's clients from across the globe. It included individuals from the US, the UK, Qatar, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, Australia, Hong Kong, Spain, Germany, and France. According to an article in International Investment, <clears throat> the founder and CEO of the DeVere Group, Nigel Green, stated, mainstream expansion is clearly ev evident by the fact that more than the third, 35%, of wealthy individuals around the globe who are already likely to be successful investors are telling us that they have already been exposed to crypto that way that they will be by the end of this year. Nigel Green also stated that DeVere's wealthy clients were unable to ignore the huge potential of cryptocurrencies, adding that there was surging public demand for digital currencies, global currencies in a digitized, globalized world. I would be surprised if rich people in general weren't already in cryptocurrencies. This has been going on for quite some time. I mean, to be fair, people like Warren Buffett aren't in cryptocurrencies that we know about. Um, but I'm pretty, I've met a fair number of uh, everyday people people, average Joes, who literally have dumped like $50, $100, $150 into cryptocurrencies. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to, I don't have uh, tens of billions of dollars, but I'm going to assume if you're a billionaire, you know, half a million into crypto couldn't really hurt, but I guess a lot of people are still um, on the fence. I I, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess we're so deep into the crypto space that it all kind of makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense to you. Like, I see where the market is going, um, but I guess everyone else who doesn't uh, hear about the news every single day and doesn't read up on it doesn't really see the potential or where this is actually going to go in the future. Last up in our country bounce, we have news from Hong Kong. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority, the HKMA, the region's de facto uh, central bank, I say crypto bank, <laughs> central bank currently has no plans to issue a central bank digital currency, a high-level government official said on Wednesday. During a council meeting with legislators in Hong Kong, Joseph Chan, acting secretary for financial services and the treasury, said the HKMA's research on the topic has led to a belief that a central bank digital currency would be less useful in Hong Kong compared to other jurisdictions. They said the HKMA has carried out research on CBDC 
At the same time, the HKMA notes that the benefits of CBDC and its efficiency gains will depend on the actual circumstances of a jurisdiction. In the context of Hong Kong, the already efficient payment infrastructure and services make central bank digital currencies, I'm tired of saying CBDC, a less attractive proposition. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority has no plans to issue a central bank digital currency at this stage, but will continue to monitor the international development. A representative from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority also confirmed the acting security, <laughs> security secretary statement, but did not <laughs> disclose further details on the agency's research on the issue. Kind of surprising, but I mean, I'm they're doing research into it. So I'm pretty sure they have future plans for it. Like I said, this is all like a dominoes game. Once a major country announces that they're actually going to create a, uh, a cryptocurrency or their own digital currency, you're definitely going to see a lot of other countries kind of get into it. What I'm waiting for is a big domino to fall because there are a lot of countries that will definitely benefit from cryptocurrencies. And I'm hoping that... One of them will do the right thing and that because what was pretty much going to end up happening is that they're going to end up eventually creating their own digital currency, cryptocurrency, whatever you want to call it for a country. And they're going to have like a 25% inflation rate. I can see it coming right now, which is going to devalue their digital currency, which kind of doesn't make any sense. I have a strong feeling um, much like that. What is it? Telegram's ICO that's going on. They're making I think they're, they're, they're supposed to have like a trillion coins that are going to be passing around. There's definitely going to be a country who's going to create a cryptocurrency, at least one, and it's going to have 10 or 100 trillion coins, and they're never going to print anymore, and it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how that country flourishes over the next 20 to 30 years, if any of us are still on this planet or if we're not on Mars or something like that. All right, everyone, that's definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Hope you guys have a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's amazing. Thank you once again for all your support. I do appreciate it. Let's hope the prices eventually uh, get moving. Let's hope a decoupling ends up happening in June. That is my biggest wish. I don't even want to go on vacation. I would just like the coins to kind of completely decouple from Bitcoin. So it's kind of like in uh, every coin for itself type situation. Once again, thank you for watching. And I will talk to you all soon. See you.